Hello everybody, welcome back to Red Tool House. Today, we are going to install what I call the 99.9% .9 maintenance-free chicken water on the chicken church. So, come along. So why do I call this 99.9% .9 maintenance-free? Well, the, the game plan is, of course, to capture all the rain off of both sides of the roof of the chicken church. So we're gonna collect that in gutters, and we're gonna have those gutters funnel down into a pipe that again will, that'll of course will fill up a 55 gallon or 60 gallon olive drum barrel. Not exactly sure the volume of that, but it's, it's close to 55. And then of course bulkhead below that will then pipe down into a bell water that the chickens can access obviously at any time. So the reason why I say this is almost 100% maintenance free is the amount of rain we get in West Virginia will fill this barrel up and with 30 plus chickens here in the church, they're not going to drink that down unless we have like a month of drought, then I won't have to do anything with it. It will be automatic. It'll fill itself up. The chickens all have, always have access to it. And so just one less chore that I have to do on a regular basis. So as with anything in the woods, we've got this massive, massive white oak here at the, at the edge of the church. Uh, this, this has been an anchor tree. I've even made, when we, when we dozed the house site, the house site is the size that it is because of this tree. I wanted this tree to stay. This thing is ginormous. It probably can tell you when the first uh, man walked across this, uh, this property. So this is a massive oak, but the problem with that, of course, is you get this time of year, you get all of this stuff, you get all the pollen, you get all the little um, reproductive bits, and of course, leaves and dust and those things. So we have to make sure we put some safeguards in place to keep the barrel from filling up with a bunch of junk. So uh, we'll detail that as well. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, of course, is get, come on, chicken, give me a break. Uh, the gutter section hung. So since we're gonna do both sides of the chicken church, you know, I gotta have two downspouts like you'd do on a normal house, but we don't do anything normal around here. So I'm actually gonna make a, put a board across the back here, like a bridge, if you will, uh, just an extended piece of uh, wood to be like a fascia. And we're gonna run gutter along this side. And that's not to catch any rain per se. It's just to have the water on the downhill side just be channeled over here so we have one downspout. So it's, it's kind of a trade of material. It's gonna look a little hinky, but it's on the back side of the chicken church, so uh, it won't be that big a deal. Nobody but the deer on this side will uh, see what's going on. So when we get this installed, a uh, little bit of a downslope, you know, nothing crazy here. Uh, the vinyl sections come in 10 foot pieces and the soffit and the overhang, I think are like 11 and a half. So I have an extra piece of gutter that we'll cut down, have to use junctions, blah, 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 all that type of stuff. But we'll get this hung and uh, then I'll show you what I'm going to do with the bridge, uh, with the, the scrap board. So explain that a little better as we get to it. All right, so I came down here to the workshop to work on our corner. This is the corner that's going to be the, the drain area, the lowest part. Again, since we're bridging across uh, both sides of the chicken church, we want to have one singular drain. So this will be the corner on the uphill side, and it'll be the lowest part. So what I've got, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna link to all the components that I got from Amazon to do this. But basically what I have is, is a bulkhead, and this is the same bulkhead I used on our mobile coop. So it's a bit overkill because it can handle an inch and a half diameter, outside diameter pipe, PVC pipe. But you can see this big boy. So it's a bulkhead, it's got a gasket, a big uh, lock nut there. And we're going to drill a hole into the bottom and right into the corner of this corner piece and that bulkhead will sit down in there like that. And of course a drain below it and a piece of one and a half inch PVC will go into there and we'll angle it over to our 
barrel that we're going to fill up. And obviously to keep the leaves and all the detritus and all that fun stuff from getting down in my barrel and clogging everything up, you can order this little drain screen. So it just screws into the top of the bulkhead, like so. And it keeps the big chunkies from, from getting in there. Uh, same setup on the gutter, on the mobile coop, does really well, especially this time of year when all that pollen and all the funk is coming off the trees. Man, it gets clogged up and, and it's much easier to clean the basket than it is to get in there and clean out the tank and clean out the, uh, you know, the, uh, the part of the bell water that gets obstructed and all that. So uh, they make these in a bunch of different sizes, but this is the one I found that had the basket and was big enough for my PVC to fit in. So um, like I said, I'll link to that below. Now we just need to drill a hole in it. Yeah, I had to do a slight modification to the bulkhead. I had to do the same thing on the uh, mobile coop. So just cut a little notch out of it there. So the, um, the little, little bow, the little rib of the uh, turn here doesn't foul. I made sure obviously not to cut the gasket. And I didn't notch in too far that it fouls the gasket from doing what it needs to do. So left enough of the lip there. So I'm hoping we put all this together. lock nut underneath and since this is outside it's not a huge deal that it drips but we obviously want to put as much water in the barrel as possible all right so let's put that in there and and tighten that down enough to pretty much crush that washer all the way around so that should give us a watertight seal and then of course our strainer basket goes in there so now let's go integrate that in with the rest of our gutter. You know, it just wouldn't be a Red Tool House project without some stupid mistake. <laughs> you know, and, and I ran into this a couple years ago when I put the gutter system on the farrowing barn, and you think I would have learned. So, when you go to the box store and you buy corners, when you think, hey, a corner's a corner, left hand, right hand, it doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't matter, left hand, right hand, but there's inside corners and there's outside corners. I need an outside corner. So I need a corner that... Bug flew in my ear. Get out of my ear, bug. I need a corner that the curved side of the K style is on the outside. This is the inside. So that doesn't work. So I had to send the boys to the box store to get the proper pieces. And then what's really a Greek tragedy is, in trying to be so clever with my video shooting, I was down at the workshop gathering stuff, and I thought, well, I can go ahead and shoot the segment of me putting the bulkhead in the corner and just drop that in when I need to, and I'll have to drive back down to the shop. So here's the bulkhead in the corner, all installed nice and sexy-like. We actually did some video of it. But it's the wrong dang corner. <laughs> so not only am I not able to use that footage, but I've also ruined a corner. So we'll have to take this apart, and when the boys show up at the proper corner, then we'll do that again. So anyway, so while we're waiting on the, um, the boys to come back, I think I'm going to go ahead and keep working. I can at least do the board across the back here. I can install the gutter on this side, um, like I did this side, and uh, still keep working. So I'm not completely dead in the water. All right, so I got this span board, this saw foot bridge, whatever you want to call it, screwed up here, nice and firm. And that will be what we attach the gutter to. So it'll tie in the corner of the downhill side uh, with the corner of the uphill side, and this will be our drain area. 
So I obviously got to wait for the boys to show up at those corners because I don't want to put everything in and cut it to length until I'm ready to test it with the corners. So the idea is, you can see this T-post right here. This T-post comes will come to the corner of the um, coop and that'll make the corner of the fence. And this, between this T-post where there's fence already in place, you know, the poultry netting's going away, uh, this will be a gate where I can back the trailer in full of wood chips and dump those here. So the area I'm standing here now, this area, will be outside of the chicken access. And that's where I want the water to be. I don't want them jumping up on it, roosting on it, all that type of stuff. So I want the water barrel to be here on this side. And I want that to be level, and of course it's got to be lower than the gutter. So I'm going to start digging that out. I can work on that while I'm waiting on the boys. Perfect. Alright, so I recessed the barrel enough here in the ground that it gets me level, of course, but also gives me enough clearance to be able to go under the downspout. So uh, obviously we got to be low enough that a 90 degree can come down, come over and into the barrel. So I wanted to make sure I had enough clearance clearance to uh, cover what I needed to. And with this vector vector that we have, then the water will be able to just flow easily into the barrel here. Woo! <laughs> Squirrel just knocked a big old branch out of the tree behind us. All right, so still waiting for the boys to get the corner. And I, I put the, um, the wrong corner on there just so I can get a gauge of how low the, uh, the uh, bulkhead fitting is going to be. But uh, while we're working on that, then I can maybe go ahead and start working on hanging the bell water, waiting for the boys to show up at the pieces and get that plumbed and put together. All right, so the boys returned with the uh, piece that we need. So I stopped working on the bell water there. And let's see if we can remedy our issue. Let's see if I can get this thing off here. Dog just suck her down. Of course, the filter bag screen comes off fine. But how about this? Holy moly. <clears throat>
Now Kelly would be angry with me, but I'm going to save this in case I ever build a building with a dormer that needs an inside corner gutter with a bulkhead for rain catchment. You know that's going to happen at some point. And if I throw this away, then I'll hate myself later. Alright, so three hours and three hundred dollars later, <laughs> we've, got, we've got the gutter in place. So, uh, spanning across, everything's sloping down to our drain here, and we'll go straight into our bulkhead that we've got our, our barrel leveled. I couldn't, you know, I didn't want to sink that barrel too far, I wanted to get it level so that our um, line could go underneath it, and of course, and you can maximize the water. I don't want to sink it too low because I've got to have a bulkhead with the hose running toward the bell water. So if it's too low, then you don't, uh, you have to have the bulkhead higher up. And of course, we're not going to be able to utilize the full depth of the barrel. We're not going to go straight to the very bottom because in case there is a bunch of silt and gunk, we want to be able to clean that out and it not get into the line. And we're also not just going to use this or plumb this to just fill the bell water. While I'm at it, I'm going to put a splitter on here so I can hook a garden hose because our garden is right down there. So the neat thing about this is it could make this expandable at some point. So get another olive barrel, put it beside it and put a low bulkhead for stabilizing so the water will stabilize. And, and just keep, I could just keep putting olive barrels there and have tons of rain catchment that can not only water the chickens, but could also have the hydraulic pressure to water our garden without having to run our well pump. But let's get our barrel plumbed up and That'll be our next step, and soon we're going to test with some water. I can't do a rain dance, but we may pour a bucket in and just see how it goes. All right, so now we're going to drill a hole in the bottom of the barrel to put our bulkhead in. Um, again, I'll post the links to these on Amazon. I think I got four of them, for like 15 bucks or 20 bucks. I don't remember. But anyway, so um, using an inch and a quarter spade bit, I believe, drilling the hole is not the problem. Actually putting the bulkhead inside of it is a little bit of the difficulty. I'm a little bit wider than the barrel opening, so I've recruited the help of my boys. <laughs> Mr. Slim Jim there. So he's going to be able to help, I think, fit in the barrel a little bit. So if we get him stuck, we'll just roll him down the hill. So, all right. So I'm going to drill a hole here. Again, we're not going to go to the very bottom uh, because we want to keep the sludge out of it. And of course, we also want to be above ground height. Stand in here in the low spot, if you would. Okay. okay. Right here. Mm -hmm. What the heck? Get inside. You gotta turn. Where's the opening? Turn to your face in the opening. Put your hands up. Can you reach it? Yeah. Will it push all the way through? It shouldn't have to screw. It should just push. All right, so got that end dog down, got the washer crushed, all that needed to be there, gasket. Um, that went pretty quickly. In fact, that wasn't nearly as comedic as I was hoping that would have been. I thought I was gonna get him stuck. Oh well. All right, so let's, uh, let me show you how I'm gonna plumb this, how we're gonna reduce down from this one inch all the way down to our uh, quarter inch hose. 
it only cost about uh, $600 in brass fittings at Lowe's. So needless to say, I spent um, well over an hour in the plumbing section at the box store trying to figure out exactly how to go from this one inch to a splitter of the hose and then down to the quarter inch. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a PVC threaded one inch to three quarter inch reducer there. So that'll reduce down. And then we'll just have a little section of three quarter inch pipe, just enough to tie in here. So we'll go PVC to there. And then we'll thread in our splitter and that'll get us to the hose. So let me get that put together first and then we'll show how we use brass to step down. So that gets us to our hose. Now let's reduce down to our quarter. So we're going from a three quarter inch brass hose down to a half inch male, six dollars. And then from the half inch, we're going down to three eighths, six dollars. And then the three eighths, we're going to a quarter inch barbed, six dollars. So there's 18 stinking dollars and brass. It's insane. And uh, I am going to Teflon tape these. I didn't Teflon tape the PVC, didn't even glue it together yet. I'm going to do a lot of testing before we get too crazy here. A little drip isn't a huge deal either. Now I could just put a 90 degree on this to dump straight into the barrel and we'd be in fine shape. There's absolutely no reason why that wouldn't work. But to me that would make this about 85% maintenance free. I want to do one more addition to really make sure that I don't have to come up here and check on this on a regular basis. And it's more than just go back and glue all my joints. So let's go to the workshop real quick. Okay, so since that barrel and the chicken church are under that beautiful oak tree, they got the sugar maple on the other side, you know, there's going to be stuff that falls off of that all year long. So uh, that barrel can fill up really quickly with gunk and get all funky and stuff. So, and not to mention, it's going to be a breeding ground for mosquitoes. You know, it's West Virginia, we have mosquitoes. But, uh, so what I'm going to do is just simply, I bought some replacement screen, um, for like a screen door repair. And I'm just gonna make a frame that we can attach to the top of that opening. I, I don't have the lid to that barrel, but we're just gonna make a frame that the water, and that's why I want that pipe and that um, coming at it at a 90 degree angle. So when the water comes across, if it's got any uh, stuff that made it through the basket, some film or filth or anything like that, it's gonna kind of push it across that screen and water can still go in. So it's almost like a self flushing type of thing. As the water comes across, it should knock out any of those obstacles, if there's a you know, big chunk of goo that slid through, then it'll push that away. So I measured the opening of the barrel, 16 and a half roughly, so we'll make a 17 by 17 square frame. And uh, we're going to actually use, in, in honor of the uh, huge white oak tree that is uh, beside there, I'm going to take this piece of white oak that I had in my scrap pile, even up there behind my air compressor, and we're going to use that to make our frame. So we've got a frame there, some corner bracing in it to make it strong, stretched it tight. Need to clinch my nails over a little bit because they are poking through and then we'll be good to go. All right, 
can be a winner. Oh. Exquisite. I think I'm gonna like that. I could possibly even, ooh, funky echo. Hello, hello, hello. I think I could even shorten the pipe a little bit here and possibly not lose any water. So now, I think we need to test it to see how this is gonna work. We need more water than that. Okay, so I've got the garden hose stuck in the far end of the gutter here. And way down there, my lovely assistant's coming to turn the garden hose on. And you may be thinking, well, Troy, if you can run a garden hose up here, why didn't you just put a $50 garden hose on the ground and just turn it on when you needed to water the chickens? And to that I say, where's the fun in that? Let's spend 300 plus dollars in gutters. It's not a homestead unless you're wasting money, right? Okay, here comes the water. <coughs> comes the pollen. Oh, I didn't put my... <laughs> I got to snap that piece in, so we got to put that piece in. All right. <laughs> put our junction section in there to fix our leak. <coughs> A little leak around our downspout here. I didn't glue that, obviously. Not a huge deal. Let's see what the front looks like. No drippies there. Yep, definitely running downhill. <coughs> Paul is about to kill me. Ah! Not quite up to the bulkhead yet. Put my valves here. <coughs> so we got the water valve going through the polyethylene, polystyrene, polystyrene, whatever it is, polymarlene. So it's on, hose bibs turned off. So we'll see how this goes. Here we go. I guess I could have cleaned out the bell water a little bit. Oh my goodness. Let's do that. All right, I think that's gonna work. We've tested everything. We've got uh, obviously just a couple leaks at the, the uh, downspout there. Probably we'll uh, end up gluing that off. I'm not 100% sure I like being able to take that apart. So we'll see, we may just be what it is. And uh, of course my PVC pieces down here at the bottom, I will glue those cause those are dripping a little bit. But the bell water's working fine. The ladies are already checking it out, getting the water they need. Now. I'm curious to see, we've, we, we have rain in the forecast later this week, so I'm, I'm actually curious to drain the barrel, uh, and if, if I know it's gonna rain, I can get ahead of it, who knows. Drain the barrel, have it empty, have my rain gauge empty, and just see how much rain we get and what fills it up. Now, it's not gonna be super accurate because the oak tree is going to either deflect or funnel water onto the, the roof, but we'll be curious to see just how many inches of rain it takes to fill that thing up. Right now, you may be asking, what about overflow? Well, overflow right now is just gonna overflow in the barrel, uh, over the edge of the barrel, then of course just down on the ground. Um, ideally, if we put multiple barrels in, then we put um, an equilibrium pipe across. I even thought about maybe channeling the overflow at some point down around here. I don't know if you can see the IBC tote we have there. It's, it's down on the bench. Although I could even rain catch, um, you know, if, if we want to plumb it over that way, and be able to catch overflow. You can never have too much water uh, in storage up on a hill above where you need it. So, Well, comment below. Let me know what you think. And uh, let me know if you agree that this is 99.9% .9 maintenance free now. Because I think with the amount of water we collect, with the filtration systems in place, 
uh, we should be able to leave this intact all the way up until freezing weather. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Take care, everybody.